Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So now we have Shaq coming at Joel and B for saying that he's not going to play back to backs this season. And when you come out and say that, it changes a lot of dynamics around the team, right? Uh, you're going to find yourself coming back and really guys not getting any continuity with you being out. And the suspected time that Joel and B will miss anyway uh, because he's hurt, typically, you know, throughout an NBA season. And the NBA already has marketed these games, said we're going to have this on TV at this specific time, and marketing Joel Embiid as the star and the face of the franchise of, the, of, of you know, the Philadelphia 76ers is going to make the NBA want to protect their investment, and they're going to launch an investigation, most likely, as Sham Skarania reported. Um... But we have Shaq Diesel talking about it. We saw KG Big Ticket calling them soft in this era. And we're going to look back at a little bit of what KG said. We're going to look at what Shaq said. You have to want to be that guy. And with his statements the other day, I don't think Joel wants to be that guy. Mm. I actually want him to take it personal. Like, you can't come out before the season's have not playing back-to-back. Say it again. Spell it. S-O-F. Capital T. Shout out to you guys. I wanted all the smoke. I'm in LA. It ain't, it ain't Magic City no more. I want it. Bring it to me. So when he came out and said, I'm not playing back to back, I thought about it first. I'm like, you don't get double team. You don't get triple team. Oh, you pick and pop. Why are you tired? Until he steps up and takes that responsibility and puts the city and the team on his back. Because he can do it. Like, he, he got pissed off one time last year. How many he dropped? 70. 70. On the Spurs. So if, if you can drop 70 when you're pissed off, you can, you can average 40. He looked great in the Olympics against Jokic, too. He yeah. did. First off, it comes out in um, Philly that uh, big fella, Joel Embiid, is not going to play back-to-backs ever again. Like, it's over. Like, I guess for the duration that he's ever in the league, which is a fucking amazing that he can get this off. I mean, this is, this is, <laughs> this is it. Dog. Dog. Back to backs are part of the fucking of the of the. Of the so that's going to be about like fifteen, 15 this year. So automatically, you're not playing in fifteen, 15 games. games. So oh, he's missed. Six. You got a no, no, sixty-seven game schedule. Right. He's going to play one of those games, but he's not going to play both of those games. Yeah, man. Think of man. Listen. Okay. What do you think is a good number of games he? Plays? Eighty-two games, man. This is what the fucking job calls for. You're not practicing. You're not even playing a whole fucking, you don't play in the summer. Right. I can see if you playing in the summer, you on the playground, you went to the Olympics, then it's training camp. Y'all do 30 days of uh, fucking tour days. Okay, that's when you get rest. Man, I don't want to hear this shit, man. I don't want to hear none of this shit. Motherfucker can sit out a back-to-backs. Bro, don't, bro. Hey, listen, we done with that comparison of the era shit. We're going to respect this era and what it does, and, and that's it. I don't, want, don't, don't, don't compare nobody and none of this shit because I think, you can't. If you ain't played, man, man, listen. I think that's going to hurt Philly. That's going to hurt Philly from a, not even that, but bro. From you, a seeding perspective. Nah, fucking, like, it's, it's, you know it's, it's rhythm. One night I got P, next P, night, next night I ain't got him. You might have to put, they might put themselves in the position to where they play Boston in the first round. When you in shape, dog, you run through some of that shit. Some of that shit you get. You you bang it, you you hit your knee or some shit or you you know what I'm saying because everybody's I agree. man two or three days man you lifting you man listen you feel me it's too much oh no Paul you fell okay we're gonna sit you out for a week because you fell nah sometimes you gotta tell the doctor I'm good let me see woo 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 yeah man it's just another level or whatever we ain't even come in here on that today but yeah I, I feel some type of way when I sit back because I don't right. w- where's the at some point athletes you know what I'm saying you have to save us from ourselves but. If I'm telling you I'm good, then let me let me go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to don't predetermine. Then this is my job too, dog. You paid me to come here and, and play ball. Right. You you telling me to sit? I, nah, I can't do my job. That, like that, nah, that ain't bro. them. That's I think that's him saying it. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. But I just want to see more grit and push from all the players, man. I know y'all gearing up for the marathon, but the marathon has to start somewhere in the run. Now whether you're going hard up the hill or you slow down, you're still going. So I'm going to say a couple of things about Joel Embiid, and this is just my take on it. It goes back to that New York series for me when he was out there forcing himself to play through every game. 
we didn't see that same level of determination the year prior when James Harden was still on the team when they played the Boston Celtics. So it was like he didn't want to play in a series where they felt overmatched uh, as much, but he felt like he had an advantage on the Knicks and he tried to power through it. Ended up sustaining more injuries, obviously. And not only that, he compounds that by going and playing in the Olympics. Taking the easy route in the Olympics by playing with Team USA, to be honest with you. Um, but playing in the Olympics, nonetheless, when you should have been home resting. Uh, nobody can't really take the team serious. Love Tyrese Maxey as a player. And I feel like it's unfortunate that he got Paul George and Joel B. Now, George may come back and play some good ball for the team. But he's aging at this point. The injuries don't get better as you get older, right? You don't miraculously get healthy. If your recent history shows a pattern of injury, that's only going to continue as you age and you play in this brutal game uh, we call basketball that's not kind to your knees and your lower extremities by no stretch of imagination. You got somebody like Paul George who's had that devastating injury where he hit the stanchion way back then. So you take all of this stuff into consideration, right? Um, but Paul George ain't came out and say nothing like that. I didn't mean to send Paul George astray. I'm just saying he getting older. But as far as MB, uh, this guy has never been reliable. He missed his first two seasons. He was as young as he was going to get back then, and he missed his first two seasons. If I'm being honest with you, I didn't feel like MB would last this long. Um, I think the Sixers are protecting their investment. It's easy to say you should just roll them out there and play them. I think what they want to make sure they do is continue to stay competitive, continue to go to the postseason as long as they can. Uh, I know they're selling championship as the goal, but if you own a franchise and you're able to keep a player that is instrumental in the, you getting into the postseason, whether you're in a play-in situation or not, um, you can get to the postseason every year, give your fans uh, something to cheer for, and they can come to playoff games, and you earn that extra revenue uh, by having more games that season. Looking at it from a business perspective, I understand why they do that. Uh, with that, though, um, you got your fans that's paying to see and be playing real time. You already did TV deals. The the um, advertisers looking at the team as having Joel Embiid on the team, who's an All Star MVP and all that. And him missing those games. So if a back-to-back -back falls on the night where he's supposed to play Jokic, he won't play. If he's playing against AD and the Lakers, he won't be on the court if it's a back-to-back. -back. And you just have to assume, even with that level of management, he's going to miss more games like Kawhi Leonard. I've never seen low management work where the player doesn't get hurt even more. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we will see how this works out, man. I think Joel B is nearing the end portion of his career, unfortunately. I think he gave us some great moments at times, but he had an underwhelming playoff career if you really want to look at the totality of it. Um, and also, um, you know, just some of the questions over the summer, I feel like the Sixers dropped the ball. They were supposed to say, nah, you can't play in the Olympics. You've been too hurt. You need to do everything we need you to do this summer because they didn't invest it in them, right? Um, healthy players play in the Olympics. Relatively healthy players, right? Not players who already have injury problems. He could have ended his career in the Olympics. That's how injury prone he is. So I blame this on the organization some too for allowing him to get that extra basketball um, with the USA team. He should have been home and they should have been monitoring him because now this is your go at it. You would have had to think that this year is the window because next year, Paul George will be even a year older. Maxie will be going more into his prime, but uh, Embiid is like a 36-year-old man, like physically. And he's not that age, but he is older than his actual age is in basketball years. You look at what his body's been through. So that's my take on it, man. I don't know I was all over the place, but it's just so much to say about this situation. And something, some of this stuff disgusts me. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Peace.